Okay, now uh, what we have here is the uh, Raspberry Pi B Plus uh, here on the left, which has just arrived as of yesterday. Now uh, on the other side here we have the B, which everyone knows and is probably quite familiar with. And I thought to show some of the differences. Now, obviously the most obvious one initially is the fact that the uh, big large yellow composite photo connector is now gone and in its place we have uh, an extended uh, I.O. connector so we've gone from 26 pins here to 40 pins here now fortunately the first 26 pins are the same so now we gained an extra 14 so that would be quite interesting to see what people use that for now the camera and the uh, sorry the uh, display and the camera interfaces being moved slightly so uh, you know, that's not a lot of difference to be fair and obviously the display interfaces aren't really in use at the moment so anyway we move on and the next thing we we'll notice is that we now have four USBs rather than just the two which is quite handy because if you needed a Wi-Fi keyboard and mouse you would have been immediately using a hub and of course that would have meant another power supply etc etc and uh, it would have been quite awkward and of course you probably got put a memory stick in there as well so it's quite handy and that's essentially the same chip but it's the version with four ports rather than just a two port hub next thing we notice is that the network interface now has the actual LEDs built into the actual connector rather than just the actual uh, PCB if you look here the old PCB go down here and it's moved over to here and uh, if you come back if you look here you will find that uh, this is where your composite video is now moved to so rather than having just a conventional stereo port you know, we have an AV port, which is quite familiar on, say, a lot of laptops, which uh, has the composite video and the stereo audio coming out on a uh, four-port jack. And uh, you get those as standard leads, that's not too bad. The uh, HDMI is obviously now coming out here. And I don't think that's, that's moved slightly, but uh, not significantly. Next thing we notice over here is that the power rather than now coming from here on the end is now coming here on this side and rather than it going into a linear regulator which is obviously quite wasteful it's now going into uh, a switch mode so I mean there's been a lot of complaints and general comments on the efficiency and maybe some of the uh, actual uh, problems with the stability of the Pi which is relating to the actual switch power supply and a lot of people suggested actually having the switch mode power supply so now they do have a switch mode power supply and hopefully this will really improve things and uh, you can see that there now it's the same chip I mean you can't actually see the chip underneath there that's actually the uh, pop RAM but uh, it isn't actually the same actual processor now underneath OK, on the back, uh, now we see a few other differences. And uh, see that's obviously the full sized SD card, uh, plastic framed uh, on the original Raspberry Pi. And over here on the Pi B, they've moved that over to a uh, metal push push uh, micro SD, which is an improvement because now it won't. Uh, be so proud over the edge of the board and probably won't get so knocked and a uh, few of the minor things you see there's some test points which are moved to the bottom of the board no doubt for testing purposes and uh, not really much interest to ourselves but uh, certainly a little bit neater and a little bit smaller now if we move on to the cards and how these fit in let's uh, take a look here now this is a uh, Siseco radio and it's just it's quite small and let's see if I can just get that on there one handed and as you can see 
that's great that's uh, maybe not quite straight but um, fits on there no problem there's nothing obscuring it just as the uh, original Raspberry Pi but uh, probably not too surprising because it's quite a small board if you take these off okay we've tried the rather small Siseko part now that obviously worked properly and it was uh, really small so it wasn't really an issue now uh, we've got a few other boards here we've got the Pi Face Digital which is uh, a nice relay board this one here with the picture obscured is the uh, Pi Face Controller Display which is this one here with the LCD we've removed in a previous life and uh, also just as a little try we got a uh, Adafruit board now let's go for the first one and that will be the Pi Face Digital and, uh, let's okay this is the uh, Pi Face Digital now as you can see the second uh, USB has completely obscured the any possibility of the uh, connector coming down this is not going to come down now this is there's no room for it whatsoever now that's a little cutout if you remember for the uh, phono which is probably not really relevant anymore but uh, as you can see that's just not going to happen and uh, it's a bit inconvenient and I think actually this is possibly slightly longer uh, network connector so uh, that's actually obscuring as well so it's probably a redesign time for uh, this part so let's have a look at the next okay and here is the uh, Pi Face uh, controller display board it was again without the LCD but it doesn't really matter and we've got a similar problem again possibly not quite so bad but uh, it's it's not going to uh, do the do unfortunately so again a redesign for this board of a spin I'm sure that uh, at a push let's have a look at the LCD let's take the LCD there yeah I mean I suppose it doesn't matter the LCD is slightly higher up so it won't obscure just place it on there so you can come and cut this board up here somewhere move these along or uh, maybe put that on the side so uh, yeah it could be done but uh, it's slightly awkward and then uh, let's finally try the actual uh, Adafruit okay now here's the Adafruit board and this is just a prototyping board so you can do what you want with this now uh, I was actually wondering why this actually fitted quite well and then I realised that the uh, the actual board was actually double stacked it had this little connector on top so uh, basically you've raised that up by what's that some four or five millimeters or more so in theory I would imagine if you did this with the uh, other boards you'd probably be okay so as a bit of a design rule really you want to just jack that up maybe four or five mil on a different uh, strip but uh, it might be easier to actually just redesign it totally in a long term. Anyway, as you see here, the one thing you notice is obviously it doesn't use all the I.O. because obviously it wasn't designed to use all the I.O. at the time. But it uh, does actually leave a bit of a space due to that little uh, double stacking. Now that's uh, not bad. So that's quite handy. Okay, to conclude, we have the uh, B+. Plus and the B. Is it a good upgrade? And I think yes it is overall. Now what you gained is obviously 40 pin IO of a 26 so that's good. We've lost the phono connector fair enough but uh, it's actually come out on here so that's not a problem. Minor move of these connectors that's not really an issue. Now the actual HDMI is actually all combined together and to actually all the USB etc all on one two sides rather than one two three four 
side so the cases should be a little easier to design and assemble. We've got the switch mode power supply rather than the linear so really reliability should be improved and also power consumption and on the rear we now have the micro SD rather than the SD card so now it will not protrude so far from the actual board and should actually be a lot safer inside there thanks so much cheers